My name is James Buscard, president of Nevada Exploration, and we're focused on what we believe is the biggest prize in our industry, discovering Nevada's next Carlentech gold deposit. And to do so, we're integrating the latest technology to explore in the half of Nevada that looks like this, where its bedrock is covered by sand and gravel. For those new to our story, I'm going to review the context of why the undercover opportunity in Nevada is so exciting and highlight how we're the first mover into this new search base. Then, most importantly, I want to share the results and our next stage plans at our flagship project, Southgrass Valley. As I do so, please note our forward-looking statements disclaimer, which is also available on our website. With our team, on the ground, we're led by Wade Hodges. Wade was a senior exploration manager at Santa Fe Pacific up until its merger with Newmont, where his team was credited with several major discoveries which today are part of Newmont and Barrick's Nevada Gold Mines joint venture. At the board, our technical oversight is led by Dr. John Larson, former Global Porphyry Copper Exploration Manager at BHP, which as we'll see is also a world leader in undercover exploration. Most recently, we welcomed our senior technical advisor, Simon Griffiths. As Barrick's former global chief geochemist, Simon was a member of their discovery team at Gold Rush, located north of South Grass Valley. This was a blind discovery, and adding Simon has allowed us to leverage the exploration framework that Barrick used to advance this otherwise covered Gold Rush deposit into our program at South Grass Valley. With a combined endowment of 250 million ounces, Nevada's Carlentide gold deposits represent one of only six gold belts in the world of that size. But what few point out is that of these ounces, 80% come from only three districts. As we sit here at the start of what many believe is the next exploration boom, the opportunity for investors is not in chasing the projects left over from the prior cycles, but rather to participate in the discovery of Nevada's next Carlin district. The challenge we face though is that the places left to explore in the state look like this. Places where the bedrock is covered beneath sand and gravel under large desert valleys. While there's been more than 200 million ounces produced from the bedrock exposed in the mountains, the bedrock hidden beneath Nevada's valleys remains largely unexplored because the workflows designed for where you can see the rocks don't work where you can't see the rocks. The consensus is that there is another 200 million ounces waiting to be discovered undercover in Nevada, but finding the second half of Nevada's gold endowment requires new tools and methods. Unquestionably, undercover exploration is the future of the industry, and in Nevada, we are the first mover to advance new technology to capitalize on this opportunity. Those familiar with our company will already know that this technology is based on groundwater chemistry, known as hydrogeochemistry. As the groundwater in the valley flows along the bedrock we can't see or map, the water samples the bedrock for us by dissolving small concentrations of it into solution. By integrating small, low-cost drill rigs and the latest laboratory equipment, explorers can now cost-effectively systematically explore large covered areas by testing the groundwater directly for gold and related pathfinders. It's a powerful tool that's being used globally by leading mining companies and recognizing the opportunity here in Nevada to find new Carlentech gold districts undercover, we've used it to complete a regional scale generative exploration program across north central Nevada. With our equipment, we've completed the world's largest groundwater chemistry exploration program, collecting more than 6,000 samples, testing it around more than 30 known gold deposits, resulting in a database of new exploration targets. From these targets, today we're advancing three new district scale Carlin type gold targets, uh, totaling more than 150 square kilometers. Our northernmost project, which we recently optioned to former Predium CEO, Joe Obzinek's new company, is located in the Kelly Creek Basin, the valley immediately south of the Getchell district. Our other projects, Grass Valley, and our flagship project, South Grass Valley here, are located in the valley immediately south of the Cortez District. Having applied the latest exploration technology to find them, as we advance these covered projects, our workflow is guided by the latest research on Nevada's three main districts. 
Each district is the product of a similarly sized massive hydrothermal system where large volumes of mineralized fluids have come up along deep seated structures to intersect readily dissolvable carbonate host rocks, which we call lower plate. Together, this research gives a clear set of requirements for both the scale and intensity of features we need to see as we advance our projects, and it's this systematic science-based workflow we're going to look at here today at Southgrass Valley. As at any covered project, we begin by carefully mapping the rocks that we can see surrounding the valley. We see typical carlin-type lower plate host rocks sticking out of the gravels, both at the north end of the project, as well as the south. And this exposed bedrock helps to establish the stratigraphic relationships between the different lower plate bedrock units and gives us the opportunity to collect the structural information to project these features we're seeing at the edges of the valley out under cover. To improve our confidence in these projections, we begin to incorporate geophysics. Firstly, we flew a large air magnetic survey, which suggested that the lower plate that we see in outcrop continues under much of the project along the margins of a large granitic intrusive. Most importantly, the survey indicated the presence of this large, likely structurally related north-northwest corridor, potentially marking the deep-seated primary fluid pathway needed to support a district-scale mineral system. Next, we completed a detailed gravity survey, which suggested that the depth to bedrock across much of the project is relatively shallow, and which also provided secondary support for this major north-north feature we see in the air magnetics. With growing evidence of a favorable geologic setting, our job then turned to testing for geochemical evidence of mineralization. We returned with our groundwater sampling equipment to complete a detailed follow-up hydrogeochemistry program as well as a large soil geochem program across the prospective target area. Beginning with the groundwater, the results defined a discrete zone of enriched golden pathfinders along the projected intersection of the favorable lower plate host rocks in this rich scale structural corridor. Looking at the results of the soils, we see effectively the same pattern of enrichment, in this case in mercury immediately above the target. With support from now multiple sources that the project contained the necessary building blocks to host a large carlin-type mineral system, we were ready to proceed with our first round of drilling. From 2018 through 2019, we completed a phase one program consisting of 10 stratigraphic orientation core holes along a three and a half kilometer length of the project. At this early stage, you could still hide a 15 million ounce Cortez Hills deposit between each of the drill holes. And accordingly, this initial program was not about trying to get lucky. Rather, the questions we need to answer were one, can we confirm the presence of the Carlin type architecture we had projected based on our geologic mapping and geophysics? And two, can we confirm the presence of a district scale mineral system within this architecture as we've seen in our groundwater and soil geochemistry? And as we announced last autumn, this is exactly what we discovered. Based on these results, in early 2020, we began our phase two program, where we used our sea holes spread out across the project, shown in red here, which to, specifically to increase the resolution and coverage of our data. Having discovered a massive volume of low-grade mineralization with our phase one program, the objective of our phase two program was to establish the features that focus the mineralized fluid flow through the district, which we refer to as the controls of mineralization. It, really, in order to narrow our efforts to places where these fluids are most likely to have deposited higher grades. As we announced in July of this year, this phase two program was successful in giving us this information, which has led us to a geologically constrained target we call East Golden Gorge. With a clear and focused target for next phase drilling, we're preparing to now test East Golden Gorge for economic mineralization. So we're going to dive in and look at the results and see what we're aiming to achieve with this upcoming program. The phase one and two drilling find a typical Carlin type geologic setting with characteristic alteration and anomalous geochemistry across several cubic kilometers of bedrock. 
By integrating the results of our drilling and mapping with the data from our geophysical surveys, we believe we've established the primary source for the mineralized hydrothermal fluids responsible for these Carlin type features, namely this Wall Canyon structural corridor, which is the same feature we had initially seen in the air mag in gravity geophysics. Based on the intensity and zonation of the alteration in geochemistry, there's strong evidence that the secondary lateral movement of the fluids through the district was stratigraphically controlled with a Cambrian aged limey mudstone that we call the CLM unit. With a handle on both the primary and secondary controls for the mineralized fluid thro flow through the district, our focus is narrowed to where the alteration, gold, pathfinders increase down towards this canyon structural corridor, which are the specific features that define our East Golden Gorge target. To test East Golden Gorge for potentially economic mineralization, we've designed a program of carefully targeted core holes to sample the full thickness of the CLM unit along this full length of this, along a three and a half kilometer length of the target. To put these next stage plans into context, it's important to highlight what differentiates this program here from other early stage projects in the state. Most significantly, compared to the size of the mineral system hosting some of Nevada's largest deposits at the north end of the valley, we believe the size of our East Golden Gorge target and the scale of its associated alteration features support the potential to discover an entire new district. Paying attention to the controls for the mineralization at these nearby deposits, our program is designed to test for both a flatline type geometry, similar to that of Gold Rush, as well as for more vertical hosted mineralization, similar to that of Cortez Hills, associated with the breccia features that we're seeing near the margins of the Grass Valley stock. To ensure the spacing of our drill holes is also suitable to test for this more constrained type of footprint, we place them an average of 600 meters apart along the length of the target. As we prepare to complete this program, we continue to believe strongly that in today's covered search space, it's geology that drives discoveries. From the beginning, we've taken a systematic approach to building the geologic framework to target mineralization based on the latest research on the features and processes responsible for Nevada's largest carbon type districts, as well as by integrating the latest exploration tools. Our target today ties directly back to the original data sets that provided the basis for our initial drilling which has been a major validation of our industry-leading undercover exploration toolkit. As I shared at the beginning, the biggest prize in Nevada is finding its next Carlin district. We believe we've got the opportunity to do so here at South Grass Valley, and we're preparing to begin a program that has the potential for being transformational, both for the project and our company. We've got to this point by putting together a global team of experts and leveraging the latest technology to be a first mover into this important new search space. We've built a portfolio of new projects and today our shareholders are positioned to participate in a near-term catalyst for a significant potential discovery. We'd like to invite you to join us as owners. Thank you.